lipstick, mascara, eyeliner, rouge. All tools used to improve the looks of sorority girls, debutantes, and of course, everyone's favorite, oh, ah, Motley Crue. Their pretty painted faces caused a fashion revolution. In the 80s, Motley Crue wore more makeup than most women, but they looked really good. They look scary, and at the same time, sort of attractive. Just because we wear lipstick don't mean we can't kick your ass. <laughs> The crew made millions of dollars, and they spent a good chunk of it on clothes. Their stage were alone filled up an entire warehouse. On Motley's 1985 Theater of Pain tour, the band's wardrobe alone cost $100,000. A single outfit could cost up to three grand. They borrowed their look from the Road Warrior movie, Kiss, Alice Cooper, all of those things were in the mix. Oh, yeah. And that was just the stage wear. The crew dropped thousands more on their everyday clothes, all thanks to LA's Chrome Hearts, boutique of choice for rich rock stars with discriminating taste. As soon as they made their millions, they made a beeline for Chrome Hearts. They were head to toe Chrome Hearts all the time. Too true. Chrome Hearts was Motley Crue's one stop shop for high end heavy metal clothing. In a single afternoon, the band once dropped over 60 grand there on items like $1,200 wristbands, belts that cost up to five grand, and $5,000 custom leather pants that didn't even include the ass part. We catered to the sophisticated rock star. But buying a buttload of top-of-the-line threads was just part of their ultra-expensive bad boy look. Because the crew dropped a bloody bundle on tattoos, too. They literally spent tens of thousands of dollars on tattoos. And Molly Crew didn't just have a tattoo, they had hundreds. And trust us, they didn't hit some Tijuana ink shack. They went to the Goga of tattoos, LA's Greg James. I would say Motley Crue sort of invented that style to be the ultimate rocker with tattoos. And having a lot of tattoos, this, you know, heightens it. Back in the day, every hardcore rock star from Ozzy Osbourne to David Lee Roth stopped in to get one of Greg's kick-ass tattoos. But the crew, they were so serious about his ink work. In 1989, while recording in Vancouver, they flew him in to be their own personal tattoo dude. They flew me up. I was just there to tattoo him for five days, whatever they wanted. I was just on call. Turned my hotel room to a tattoo shop. In retrospect, you think about it, but that, that was insane. You'd better believe in the 1980s, no one attracted squealing sex parts like the men of Motley Crue. All the girls wanted to be with the guys of Motley Crue. These guys were so irresistible with women. But there's one story where a girl comes crawling across a third story ledge to climb through Nikki Six's hotel window in the middle of the night. And that was just the groupies. The crew's steady sweethearts were some of the baddest chicks of the 80s. Nikki Six scored nasty prince protege vanity. Tommy Lee was married to TV vixen Heather Locklear. And Vince, he got down and dirty with a mud wrestler named Sharice. Vince had such a weakness for all the girls from the strip joints and girls that mud wrestled that he married one, Sharice. But Vince wasn't alone. All of the men of Motley Crue had a weakness for G-string wearing, lap dancing ladies. So strip clubs across the country laid out the red carpet to lure them in. Like New York's TNA hotspot, Goldfingers. As soon as they walk in, I would put them in a private section. Then I would make sure they were comfortable and I would start playing girls, girls, girls. And then, of course, they brought out the girls. To ensure the band had the utmost stripping experience, Goldfingers gave them a prime seat and brought out dancer after dancer, up to 35 at a time, just so the band could handpick their own pole-swinging hotties. 
would say out of 30 girls, they would probably take half of them, and everybody had a good time. Especially the girls, because these boys knew how to treat a lady. Motley only tipped in $100 bills, so the girls definitely, definitely loved them for that. It's nice to sit back and watch somebody else entertain you for a change, so cheers, girls. Ain't that the truth? Coming up... We got scars, we got damage, we got baggage. And an ungodly amount of money. Find out how the crew keeps raking it in. The Dirt is probably the best book ever written about rock. And you won't believe the mind-blowing comeback tour they've got planned. Because they're gonna like be blown away when they see Motley this time. When Fabulous Life Classics Motley Crew continues. VH1 the fabulous lives of your favorite celebrities. To find out where stars like the crew get their crazy ass stuff, visit VH1 and check out our little black book. The world that Motley Crew knew is no more. New helmet laws have made windswept heavy metal hair fall flat. Lap dancing is now a criminal offense within LA city limits. And the drink of choice for today's bad boy rocker, low carb beer. We've just been flying by the seat of our pants for, for 20 years. The 1990s were all about Bill Clinton and grunge. It was just the wrong climate for a band like The Crew. Public attitudes changed and being a rock star wasn't cool anymore. It was the end of an era. But if you thought you could kill the crew, you'd be wrong. It's a perfect time for Motley to come back because, uh, I mean, where's the competition? Where are the rock stars of today? That's right, because after being MIA for nearly a decade, the crew is launching their biggest comeback in headbanger history. No matter what's happened in the last 20 years, these guys still are Motley Crew. They're still captivating. Why? Why not? Starting with the 2001 book, The Dirt. The crew's tell-all memoir spent a record 10 months on the New York Times bestseller list, making it one of the biggest-selling rock bios ever. The Dirt is probably the best book ever written about rock. It's really spectacular. Five hundred pages filled with the filthiest, uh, most despicable human acts ever recorded. We got scars. You know, we got damage. We got baggage. And all that baggage is about to hit the big screen. The crew is in productions with MTV Films to turn the dirt into a major motion picture. The Motley Crew movie, The Dirt, is going to surprise a lot of people. The rumored cast so far is Ashton Kutcher as Tommy Lee and Johnny Knoxville as Nikki Six. Tommy apparently prefers Johnny Depp to play him because he actually plays guitar and sings and all that. But books and movies, that's just the beginning of Motley's multimedia onslaught. Because in 2005, the crew's rolling out more merchandise than you can shake a drumstick at. First, the Motley Crew action figures are ready to rock your dollhouse. Complete with fully poseable Tommy Lee and his big bad gong. For the ladies, nothing says sexy quite like these. Your very own Motley Crew unmentionables. Smoke much? Be sure to roll into any party with these. The Motley Crew's signature line of rolling papers. And for the high-end headbanger, an all-new designer take on the classic Motley Crew concert t-shirt, courtesy of chic t-shirt designer, Trunk Limited. We chose Motley Crew for a number of reasons. Motley Crue speaks to our inner badass, and everybody has one. Trunk Limited sells t-shirts that cost up to $300 for bands that include The Beatles and Kiss. But nobody outsells the crew. We can't keep Motley Crue t-shirts in stock. One of the hot fashion items in Hollywood right now are these vintage Motley Crue high-end reproduction concert tees. Everybody wants those vintage shirts. It's amazing that's become a gold mine. And while t-shirts might be a gold mine, the one thing that's always minted money for the crew? Music. And in 05, the band's blowing up the Billboard charts again. Red, White and Crew, the ultimate Motley Crew hits package, debuted at number six and sold 90,000 copies in its first week alone. 
Motley Crue's music means as much today as it meant 22 years ago. It makes me smile. We must go with this Brace yourself. The boys are also raging back with the loudest, lewdest reunion tour ever, hitting 100 cities on their North American tour. Nobody really goes to the extra effort to put on a show like Molly Crew. And each show is a two and a half hour extravaganza of metal mayhem. The band's hauling out seven tractor trailers of equipment, a 60 person crew, little people, and of course, enough pyro to blow your mind. We're still Motley. We're still rock. The kids are going to like be blown away when they see Motley this time. And this tour is going to make them a bundle. The band's projected tour earnings, more than $100 million. Oh, yeah, it's good to be back. They're the one band that has survived through the years that today's new rock fans really want to see. You just squint your eyes a little bit and you can't tell the difference between Motley now and Motley in 1983. Motley Crue looks better today, more credible, more interesting than they did even when they were popular.